Good morning, Little Masters, and welcome to today's Tolkien Times. I'm the Man of the West, also from the Prancing Pony podcast. Thank you for joining me as I head back into the rich poetry found in Tolkien's epic poem, The Lay of Lathian. Last week, we finished Canto 9 as Huan spoke to Luthien about his plans for them to escape Kelligorm's creepy clutches. Today, we start Canto 10 as Finrod meets his fate with courage and love for Beren. In Wizard's Isle still lay, forgot, enmeshed and tortured in that grot, cold, evil, doorless without light, and blank-eyed stared at endless night, two comrades. Now alone they were. The others lived no more, but bare their broken bones would lie and tell how ten had served their master well. To Felagund then Beren said, "'Twere little loss if I were dead, and I am minded all to tell, and thus perchance from this dark hell thy life to loose.' I set thee free from thine old oath, for more for me hast thou endured than e'er was earned. Ah, Baron, Baron hast not learned that promises of Morgoth's folk are frail breath. From this dark yoke of pain shall neither ever go, whether Sauron learns our names or no with his consent. Nay, more I think, yet deeper of torment we should drink, knew he that son of Barahir and Felagund were captive here. And even worse, if he should know the dreadful errand we did go. A devil's laugh they ringing heard within their pit. True, true, the word I hear you speak, a voice then said. Twere little loss if he were dead, the outlaw mortal. But the king, the elf undying, many a thing no man could suffer may endure. Perchance, when what these walls immure of dreadful anguish thy folk learn, their king to ransom they will yearn with gold and gem and high hearts cowed. Or maybe Kelligorm the proud will deem a rival's prison cheap, and crown and gold himself will keep. Perchance the errand I shall know ere all is done that ye did go. The wolf is hungry, the hour is nigh. No more need Baron wait to die. The slow time passed. Then in the gloom, two eyes there glowed. He saw his doom, barren, silent as his bonds he strained, beyond his mortal might enchained. But now the spells that Finrod spun once more were wakened and begun. From chains and anguish release he sought. Now his enchantments were come full wrought. Lo, sudden there was a rending sound of chains that parted and unwound, of meshes broken. Forth there leapt upon the wolvish thing that crept in shadow, faithful Felagund, careless of fang or venomed wound. There in the dark they wrestled slow, remorseless, snarling to and fro, teeth in flesh gripe on throat, fingers locked in shaggy coat, spurning Baron, who there lying heard the werewolf shuddering, dying, the struggle ceasing in the dark, then gasping breath and silence stark. Then a voice he heard, Farewell, on earth I need no longer dwell, friend and comrade, barren bold. My heart is burst, my limbs are cold. Here all my power I have spent to break my bonds, and dreadful rent of poisoned teeth is in my breast. I now must go to my long rest in Amon there beyond the shore of Eldamar forevermore in memory to dwell. Then silence fell, and shadows black in his dark cell surrounded him. So died the king, as still the elven harpers sing. There Baron lies, his grief no tear, his despair no horror has, nor fear, waiting for footsteps, a voice for doom, silences, profounder than the tomb of long-forgotten kings, neath years and sands uncounted, laid on biers and buried everlasting deep, slow and unbroken round him creep. The silences were sudden shivered to silver fragments, faint there quivered a voice in song that walls of rock, enchanted hill and bar and lock, and powers of darkness pierced with light. He felt about him the soft night of many stars, and in the air were rustlings and a perfume rare, the nightingales were in the trees, slim fingers flute and vile seas beneath the moon, and one more fair than all there be or ever were, upon a lonely knoll of stone, in shimmering raiment danced alone. Then in his dream it seemed he sang, and loud and fierce his chanting rang, old songs of battle in the north, of breathless deeds, of marching forth to dare uncounted odds and break great powers and towers and strong walls shake, 
and over all the silver fire that once men named the burning briar, the seven stars that Varda set about the north, were burning yet, a light in darkness, hope and woe, the emblem vast of Morgoth's foe. Who on, who on, I hear a song, far and welling, far but strong, a song that Baron bore aloft. I hear his voice, I have heard it oft in dream and wandering. Whispering low, thus Luthien spake, on the bridge of woe and mantle wrapped at dead of night she sat and sang, and to its height and to its depth the wizard's isle, rock upon rock and pile upon pile, trembling echoed, the werewolves howled, and Huon, hidden, lay and growled, watchful, listening in the dark, waiting for battle cruel and stark. Sauron heard that voice and stood, wrapped in his cloak and sable hood in his high tower. He listened long and smiled and knew that elvish song. Ah, little Luthien, what brought the foolish fly to web unsought? Morgoth, a great and rich reward to me thou wilt owe, and to thy hoard the jewel is added. Down he went, and forth his messengers he sent. Still Luthien sang, a creeping shape with blood-red tongue and jaws agape stole on the bridge, but she sang on with trembling limbs and wide eyes wan. The creeping shape leaped to her side, was grasped, and silent fell and died. And still they came, still one by one, and each was seized, and there were none returned with padding feet to tell that a shadow lurketh fierce and fell at the bridge's end, and that below the shuddering water's loathing flow o'er the gray corpses Juan killed. And this whole section is simply filled with dramatic moments, but I find that I'm powerfully drawn to those early moments in the reading there in the dungeons of Sauron, as Baron says, basically, why don't I tell them what they want to know so that you can go free? I mean, it's no big deal if I die. After all, I'm a mortal man. I'm going to die anyway. So I free you from your bond. And Finrod, wise Finrod, basically says, sweet summer child, we're never getting out of this place, no matter what he said. And believe me, it's going to be worse if they find out who we are, let alone what we're trying to do. And his death, Finrod's death. And it's powerful enough in the narrative of the Silmarillion is here told in powerful, moving verse. For comparison's sake and completion, let's look at that moment from chapter 19 of Beren and Luthien. But when the wolf came for Beren, Felagund put forth all his power and burst his bonds, and he wrestled with the werewolf and slew it with his hands and teeth, yet he himself was wounded to the death. Then he spoke to Beren, saying, I go now to my long rest in the timeless halls beyond the seas and the mountains of Amon. It will be long ere I am seen among the Noldor again, and it may be that we shall not meet a second time in death or life, for the fates of our kindreds are apart. Farewell. He died then in the dark, in Tol in Gaurhof, whose great tower he himself had built. Thus King Finrod Felagund, fairest and most beloved of the house of Finway, redeemed his oath, but Baron mourned beside him in despair. And folks, that's it for today's First Stage Friday, but come back next week for more. Of course, we will eventually get back to Fandom Friday, so if you know anybody who should join me here for a future Fandom Friday, let me know by emailing Barnum at the BransingPonyPodcast.com. And check out Patreon.com slash Tolkien Times to learn how you can support the show, get an ad-free feed, bonus weekly episode, and more. And join me again tomorrow on today's Tolkien Times as we wrap up this week and halfway through this series with Silmarillion Saturday. If you're watching this on YouTube, please be sure to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications. Please follow or subscribe in your podcast apps and follow at Tolkien Times on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Finally, as Faramir says, go with the goodwill of all good men. <laughs>